taking philosophy class this semester, summer. And it's the best class I've ever taken. It might be the only class, but it's certainly the best example of a class I've ever taken that is done with the professor has professed to do. To stimulate the students so that they go home and think themselves and learn themselves and learn how to learn themselves. Now, I don't know if it's just me or I'm a prime cut ready for this class specifically, but I'm, this class is like, it's changing my life. I'm thinking about everything in a much more, a different way. The, bef but before today, the way I put it was that, uh, cause people say, and uh, philosophy is a do-it-yourself enterprise, but you can be helped because the questions are probably more important than the answers. It's difficult to come up with the question the first time. The answer will eventually be gotten to. He helps guide and explain questions. And each question, you know, adds new questions. And just one you get a question, you th if you think you have it answered, you know, think about how it's wrong. How, if somebody that did not agree with you, they thought the opposite thing, what would they say? Assuredness, fear assuredness, because if you're sure, probably not seeing enough. Either because you're not looking, or you're ignoring what's right in front of you. So yeah, when I'm taking this class, I, uh, if I'd known what the class was going to be like, I'd wish I should have taken just this class instead of four. Because I start running out of time to do things, like making these videos. There's not a lot of extra time, and you've got to make sure the extra time gets all your homework done. That kind of thing. Now the first assignment in the class was to write your philosophy. Of course, this it was the word cap was 500 words. Uh, you'd have to have a very well developed philosophy, I think, to be able to sum up everything you think in 500 words. But uh, I deconstructed myself, and I found that there are eight events in my life that compose my philosophy. It, these aren't like the principal things. This is pretty much everything. I'm not... everything. It was everything. Eight things. Eight things happened, and that's everything. Now, out of those things, eight were experiences. I mean, uh, what, six were experiences. Two, I don't know where those came from. They were out of my control. You either innate, now that's a difficult word because some, you might say that nothing's innate. You are completely the product of your environment, which would be very B.F. Skinner or existentialist. But anyway, uh, yeah, one was a book, one was a speech, one was a person, and one was something I created, which might be... But I really got into it, and like deeply into it so much that I deconstructed my entire philosophy and eight things and thought about each one and how each one got me to here. Now uh, here is not any sort of end. Uh, the end I don't think will ever come. But uh, But I was surprised at how simple it was. And uh, I think I, I asked other people. And uh, it seemed that even eight, as what I thought was a small number, was more complex than other people. And depending on who you are, you know, it's going to be different. Again, the level of complexity is probably only roughly correlated to how many pieces there are because 
Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, but after I did this, I was thinking, man, everybody should do this. You should know what you think. If, if you don't know what you think, then you are just acting. You think you, you're using reason, but if you don't know what if you don't know what your philosophy is, then you are not using reason or something like that. And if your philosophy is inconsistent, you probably need to fix that or at least realize it's inconsistent because if there's a philosophy that was completely consistent, I don't know if we'd still have philosophy class. So I was thinking, already everybody should do this. But not only that, but every five years. Now I'm really into this whole time lapse thing. You know, so far the cast has been time lapse of thoughts and readings from the last two years. And that would go on, hopefully many more years. But uh, five years, every five years I should deconstruct my entire philosophy and understand and realize how it has changed since five years ago and what well, maybe my philosophy in five years is less is not as good as philosophy was before that would be something very important to note if it was less consistent or based on false or emotional things but I will do this every five years starting now uh, of the eight things, now I said eight even though it's actually nine. The ninth thing was so recent that uh, I'm not all that sure about what to say, what to think, or where I've gone based on that. Uh, if you think you know what it is, by the way, you, you don't know what it is. Just anybody watching. So that's the uh, philosophy class. By the way, that was philosophy, doctor, that was philosophy class at Seminole Community College with Dr. John, John, John Patrick Fitzgerald. Now, that's an Irish name. But, uh, so any students, I don't know how you could possibly come across this, but uh, highest of recommendations if I did not express that in the first sentence, which I guess I did. But, uh, highest of recommendations, even though I expressed that in the first sentence. If you are taking, if you are interested in taking these classes to genuinely learn and grow yourself, self-grow, then this is the class for you. This is not an instructional class. This is not something where you will be told what to do. You know, like I'm taking Cisco networking now and the past two classes have been entirely. This is what you do. These are the instructions. Do that, memorize them so you can do them later when you're paid to do them, what you've memorized. But philosophy, that could never happen. That's probably why it's so non-instructional. You could never be paid to Philosophies. I mean, philosophers that are paid are paid to stimulate, to teach students. But, uh, you know, the students have to learn themselves. The teachers don't teach, but the students teach themselves and the teacher, you know, once they start getting good enough to say anything back. It's not just like, uh, mind numbing, blowing. I don't understand the definition of evidence and knowledge and do I exist? You know, what do you say back to that? Do you really exist? Uh, I, I thought I existed, but then again, I have no proof, I guess, because all proof is based on existence. I'm wasting time.